Welcome to Windows Business Weekly and on this episode I'm going to talk about how to configure Windows Update for Business. So what is Windows Update for Business? So if you remember back to the days of Windows 7 and Windows 8, in order to have any control over how the PCs on your network were updated, you would need to be using Windows Server Update Services. So there was some local infrastructure required in order to get control over the update process. Now, Windows Update for Business is a new feature in Windows 10 that allows you to have similar control but without any of the local infrastructure. So Windows Update for Business is basically just a series of settings that can either be configured through the Settings app if you're a local administrator or using Group Policy. So you can configure those settings across multiple machines. So whereas in the past uh, devices would either contact Windows Server Update Services to get their updates or if there was no infrastructure, then each PC on the network would have to contact Microsoft's own update servers, but you wouldn't have any control over the update process in that particular scenario. But with Windows Update for Business, Windows 10 uses a feature called Delivery Optimization, which allows each, net, each uh, PC on the network to basically pull the downloaded updates from one or more PCs, a bit like the way that BitTorrent works. So it really allows you to save on network bandwidth and to optimize how your devices receive updates. Again, no infrastructure is required in order to make this work. It's just enabled and works out of the box. So those are the three main points uh, about Windows Update for Business. So it gives you control over how updates are applied. It uses delivery optimization to save network bandwidth, and there is no infrastructure required. So it all sounds great. So if you're not going to use Windows Update for Business, what are the alternatives? Of course, you can use a traditional Windows Server Update Services or System Center Configuration Manager uh, infrastructure if you want, if you really want absolute control over how devices are updated. But for the rest of us, Windows Update for Business is a really good solution. So in a second, I'm going to show you the Windows Update for Business interface in the Settings app and have a look at the group policy settings. But first of all, I want to also talk about some of the changes that are happening with Windows Update for Business in the Windows 10 May 2019 update. So that's a version 1903. So if you have any experience with updating Windows 10 prior to this update, you'll know that there were two servicing channels. So the semi-annual channel and the semi-annual channel targeted. Starting from this update, there's only going to be one channel and it's going to be called the semi-annual channel. So you just basically need to choose now within Windows Update for Business a deferral period if you want to defer that update being applied. You don't need to choose which channel you are going to use. So everything has been simplified from this point of view. So if you want to defer feature updates using Windows Update for Business, so feature updates are the biannual updates that basically reinstall a new version of the operating system you can do that, you can defer those updates for up to 365 days. If you want to defer quality updates, you can defer them for up to 30 days. So if you have a look at uh, the Windows 10 PC that you can see on the screen here, I'm going to open the Settings app. 
and if I come to update and security and I'm going to click here on advanced options and if I come down here to choose when updates are installed if you were familiar with this interface before, you will recognize here that now there's no option to choose a service in channel because there's only one service in channel. But we do get the option here to defer updates. So feature updates we can see here, if I drag that all the way down, you can see we can defer them by up to 365 days. Or quality updates. So quality updates are the security and performance improvements that we get at least once a month, sometimes more than once a month, and we can defer them by up to 30 days. Now we have the same settings available in group policy. So I'm going to open up the local policy object on this computer. And here I'm already in the Windows Update for Business folder. I'll just show you where I found that. So you can see here that I expanded computer configuration, administrative templates, Windows components. And if I come down, I expanded Windows Update. And here we have Windows Update for Business. So we can see here there's a setting, select when preview builds and feature updates are received. So if I click on that, you can see here, if I enable this policy, I've also got the option to enter up to a 365 day deferral period in that box. And that would obviously apply to any devices that fall in the scope of this particular policy. And additionally here, I've also got select when quality updates are received. So in just the same way, I can also set a deferral period there of up to 30 days if I enable this policy. So it's all very simple. That really is all there is to configuring the basics of Windows Update for Business. All the delivery optimization stuff just happens out of the box. So the PCs will look for other devices on the network to see where they can pull the updates from without having to go to a server or Microsoft's own update service. There are some other changes that I also like to speak about. So there are some changes to how you can configure compliance deadlines. Now, probably I'm going to do a completely separate uh, episode on the subject of compliance deadlines, because configuring these deadlines is really quite complicated. There are lots of settings within the Windows Update Group Policy folder. And to be honest, there are so many different settings with such strange wording that it's all a bit mind boggling to really understand what the effect you would get if you configured this setting X, Y, Z, for instance. Um, and I, I, I kind of have to sit and scratch my head and wonder what would be the result of that. And it seems to me that the only way you're really going to find out is to set up a test lab and uh, try it for yourselves because the documentation is so poor and so confused that it really takes quite a lot to understand what's written there. So I think I'm going to come back to the subject of actually configuring compliance deadlines uh, on another day. But I want to talk about the changes to compliance deadlines in Windows 10 version 1903. So probably the most fundamental and important change is that basically uh, compliance deadlines are now in force from the day that the update is offered to a device rather than from uh, when the update was installed and the device was ready to restart like was previously the case. So that's important to understand in this latest version of Windows 10. Uh, if you're not familiar with compliance deadlines, they're basically designed to make sure that your devices stay up to, up to date. Uh, of course, it's especially useful for mobile devices. Uh, and that's basically the point of these compliance deadlines. So Microsoft has also added a new notification and rescheduling experience for end users in this version. 
and you also have the ability to give end users control over reboots for a specific period of time. And you can also control uh, the update behavior outside of active hours. So if you know a little bit about Windows Update and Windows 10, you'll be familiar with the uh, feature active hours where you can set where the PC is active. So preferably we shouldn't update or reboot the device during that time. You can set that manually or using group policy, uh, or you can use the intelligent feature, uh, which determines when the device is active uh, rather than putting it in a hard coded uh, from this hour to another hour, uh, like is the default setting actually. You have to switch on intelligent uh, active hours if you want to use it. So we still have the same settings in the latest version of Windows 10 for compliance deadlines. So you can set the quality update deadline, which is the time when there's going to be a mandatory reboot uh, between uh, two and 30 days. The default is seven days, and that's for quality updates. For feature updates, you can set the same uh, update deadline. So it might be uh, anything again between two and 30 days, the default being seven. But there's a new setting now in Windows 10 called the grace period. And this is the minimum time a user has to commit to a reboot. So it basically gives you additional time uh, over and above those deadlines that you might have already set. And it can be up to seven days. So for instance, if a user has gone on holiday or they're doing something urgent out of the office, uh, this might be something useful that you can also configure. And this is a new setting in Windows 10 version 1903. And the other updates uh, or change, I should say, to Windows Update for Business is in compliance reporting. So before you would need to set the data diagnostic level in Windows 10 to at least basic in order to be able to use the update compliance reporting feature. Microsoft have recognized that not everybody wants to have uh, diagnostic data being collected. So now you can use update compliance reporting with Windows Update for Business without any uh, diagnostic data being collected. So you can use this feature regardless of how you've configured the diagnostic data level. It can be set to zero. Uh, you don't need to be collecting anything at all. So that's the basics of what Windows Update for Business is, how to configure it, and some of the new features that have come in Windows 10 version 1903. So I'm going to come back uh, another day and talk more about the compliance deadlines and the settings that would, you would use to configure those, because there are a lot of them and it's quite confusing. So if you want more about that, uh, then please keep an eye on the channel and look back in the next couple of weeks. And I'll try to cover that in a lot more detail. That's it for today and thanks for listening.